In this video, we're going to look at the importance of the DB2 underlying database. If you look back at the three server topology, remember we have a core server, an analytics server, and a data server. You can see the data server is running DB2, and we have uh, IBM Java, which is used during installation. There's, there's an ESE, or the enterprise server license, uh, which goes along with DB2. We have SO, storage optimization license, and EO, or encryption offering license. All, all of these components are part of the data server. Now, if you go to the Knowledge Center and you type in starting and stopping counter fraud services, something interesting is going to sort of crop up here. I'm going to click here and we're going to go to our three server environment. When you start and stop the server, uh, here you can see it's talking about starting and stopping the services, you are using a script and it's located here, opt IBM ICFM2 and dot uh, o and slash bin and then this is the name of the script. What you do to run the stop command is you enter that shell uh, uh, script and then you enter stop and then you enter the password that you're using for your WAS admin account. Now what I want to show you is that if you scroll down to where you start the server, take a look at the order that you're going to do this. You start with the data server, then you go on to the analytics and then the core server. And this is really important because the data server is listed first. Most of the ICFM system actually won't run um, without the database server running first. So the database is absolutely critical to the entire system. So if you open up a PuTTY session or just a console session to your server, uh, the data server, let's see what that's, what's in that shell. We're not going, you don't have to be a shell programmer, you don't need to be a programmer at all. I just want to show you the the, sh the what it is doing at its core. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to skip most of the beginning. This doesn't really apply to us, but look at under start. The very first thing that it's trying to do is start the database. W when you start ca uh, counter fraud, ICFM, the very first thing it does on the data server is start the database, which is may seem very obvious, but at the same time it's absolutely central. So that was the database server, but now if we switch over to the data, uh, to the client, or the CFM, ICFM2 client, and you open up Data Studio, which comes with ICFM, and you go to a connection here, um, mine is called CFM server, that's the name of our single server topology, which we're using for the demo purposes. And if I go to the DB24 core, and then the database CFDB, and then I go to my tables, you'll see a list of all the tables that are involved in ICFM. Now, what we are interested in doing here is, first of all, looking at the schema. So the schema is telling you which, uh, which tables, which are these, are belong to which schema. And obviously a schema is a sort of traditional schema that you would be familiar with, uh, you know, which tables belong to, which joins are involved in which join, uh, which tables. We're going to look at that in a second. But anyway, these schemas are really important. It's sort of an organizational tool behind your tables. And the most important, or one of the most important schemas in counter fraud management is the schema called CF fact. There are over a hundred tables here. And what we're interested in doing here is looking at the relationships. We're looking, actually interested in looking at the schema or an ERD, uh, an entity relationship diagram. We want to see what the schema looks like. What you can do to visualize that in IBM Data Studio is right click on this one of your tables essentially in CF fact, counter fraud fact schema. Right click on it, go down to show, and then select in overview diagram. And when you do that, you can essentially just click OK here and let that run. That's going to take quite some time, but when it's complete, you'll see something that looks like this. And it actually may not initially look like this. You may just have a single entry. Let me zoom in so you can see a lot better what we're, what we're talking about here. So let's say I wanted to come into one of these. You may initially just see this, this first line, and nothing down below. If you want to see your schema structured like this, you need to go down to this bottom section of the screen and turn on show key and show non-key, show index, show trigger, all the things 
that you are interested in seeing. I've turned them all on so you can see what that looks like. Essentially, I've checked all these boxes. By default, they won't be checked, so uh, if you want it to look like this, go ahead and check all of them, and you'll get results that look like this. Now, obviously, this is difficult to read. There's so much data. If I zoom out, which, which I'm doing either up through here or, in my case, by pressing Control and scrolling with the scroll wheel, uh, you can see how much data we're talking about here. And if you want to get this in a nicer format, you can export it into PDF. Now, how would you do that? Well, an easy way is just right click here in sort of the background, and then you'll see down here, File, and you can save as an image file. And you can give it a path. I've put mine on the desktop in PNG format that tends to be the best and 100% quality and uh, click on OK and when you when you do that and you go back to your desktop you'll see a an image file this one is about two megabytes if you then open it up you'll have a PNG file of exactly the same content and this is going to of course be quite big um, what I've done is to export that uh, PNG file then off to a PDF file so that you can view it a little more, a little nicer. Uh, I used Earth and View to do that, and uh, once that's up and running, it's it's actually uh, quite nice. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, and here we are. So obviously that's pretty difficult to read. So you can again zoom in just like we did with the um, the actual view. And what's nice about putting this in PDF format is that you can make bookmarks. So you can not only see all of the connections between all of the tables, but you could say, well, you know, I'm, I'm actually pretty interested in a given table. Say that you're, say that you're particularly uh, interested in this uh, CF, this table here, right? So then you can, in your PDF viewer, your uh, program, you can go up to bookmarks and just make a bookmark for it. So I've made several bookmarks. If I go to card, for example, it takes me directly to the card. If I want to look at the account table, I can go directly to the account table and so on. So that's a nice tip to get a, an idea of how the schema is structured in ICFM.